My history has lows. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, I'm sure there are many among you who remember this little camera. Yep, this is the high definition camera I use for most of my videos. Anyway, I thought today I would try to improve the sound on it. And if I can, that'll mean I don't have to have an external sound recorder recording when I'm doing the videos. I'll still have high quality, high definition videos on YouTube with sound recorded directly from this camera and hopefully in good quality. Now, unfortunately, I have lost the nut that goes on this tripod yet again. So what I was going to do was I was going to put my webcam, I was going to do this video with this webcam. I was just going to stick it on there like that, you know, tape it down so it doesn't move. So it's all nice and good. Capture it on this computer here. Which I just installed Unit Video Studio on. Except there's a problem. Now this video isn't going to be mainly about this, but I'm just bringing this up. Just to show you. Okay, I'm going to go to Capture Video. As you can see, we have a video appearing right there. That's the actual video feed from this camera here, so you can tell it's working. I bring the camera into the shot. Move it around. You can tell that that's the video feed coming from this camera, so... There's absolutely no problem there with trying to get the picture from this camera. And I guess the sound is also working as well. But if I try to make, if I try to capture a video from this thing, puts up this error. I have no idea what this means. So this completely omits this method from of filming the video because of this stupid error here. And for what it says, it might just as well be in Slavy Duvi Blavian or something. It makes no sense. These are graphs. So, what does any of this have to do with this? Nothing! I'm sure the computer is just putting that error up to piss me off, and it's doing a pretty good job of it. Yeah. I don't know why it's telling me it can't display a graph. I mean, obviously, it's nothing to do with the video because the video is right there. I mean, it's. showing the video right now as we speak so I have no idea what it means but because of that stupid error it's not going to capture any video and that's a real shame really because I've just found a way to make this camera not flicker under 50 Hertz lighting and now it seems that I'm not going to be able to use it and I don't have any video capturing software on this computer and even though old Franken PC can do it, well, it's too far away from the um, bench here, so yeah, kind of screwed really. Like I was saying, what I attempt to do is make the sound on this camera better. Now, I've taken off the little grill at the front there, and you might be able to see, I don't know if you can see it, Maybe if I hold it right up close to the camera, you might be able to see that there are two little holes in there showing two little microphones. Now, I thought originally on this camera, because there was just one thing there covering up the microphones, I thought maybe it was just one microphone and it was electrically processed to make it sound like stereo. Because there is almost no stereo separation on anything that camera records. Anyway, if you're wondering what I'm using to record right now, well, yes, I found a way to make the laptop record the video. Instead of using Ulead Video Studio, I'm using Virtual Dub. 
Only trouble is I can't get any any higher than 640 by 480, whereas in Unid I could go up to 1280 by 800. Anyway, for those of you who don't know what the camera sounds like when it makes videos, it um, well, it kind of sounds um, excuse all the noise in the background. Anyway, sounds kind of something like this. Now recording on the HD8Z camera. This is just proof that the webcam is working from the thing. There's the webcam taped onto the tripod and connected to the computer. And there's the vacant space that this camera once occupied. Anyway, pay no attention to this stuff here with this transformer and that. That's a completely unrelated thing. So anyway, this just gives you an example of how good this camera records. Anyway, I'm going to stop recording and switch back to the um, webcam. So there you go. Alright, there's something making that buzzing noise in the background. I have no idea what it is. Probably some idiot outside. Can you hear that? The microphone on this webcam is quite loud, so you probably can. And it's a got bit it's a bit shrill sounding, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the uh, screen. I've already taken out the screws. Oh, I'm going to remove the back. I should just be able to get this open by running my thumb across it. Um, try not to break anything. Yep, it's already starting to come up to come apart. we can see what's inside or at least what we have here let's have a look you can see the circuit board and yes indeed there are two microphones if we just go over I'll just move the camera there we go so it's coming out a little bit overexposed but uh, nothing not much I can do about that if I just tilt that so it's not reflecting so much light <clears throat> we can see there are two microphone connections there and there I'll just point with a pencil you'll be able to see it better and it looks like we have a couple of capacitors there's one there and one there and they're both connected across the microphone for some reason so I'm not exactly sure what the idea behind that is but I know one thing that would definitely account for why the sound on this thing is so muffled Anyway, I'm just going to test this, make sure I haven't broken it. Let's see if it turns on. And uh, yep, we still have life. It's looking at one of the oscilloscope knobs at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to take the battery out of this and I'm going to perform some surgery. Yes, uh, oh, the screen's coming out. We don't want that to happen. I'm going to dis. I'm going to unsolder these two little surface mount caps. If they, if it doesn't work without them, I'll just have to put those back on. But I'm pretty sure it will. And then, if that makes the sound better, we'll see how things go. Okay. Well, I've got those capacitors off now. They were a bugger of a job to remove and they went flying off and goodness only knows where they've landed. You might be able to see they're gone. There's no capacitor there and there's no capacitor there now. Though I'm a little bit worried because it might have damaged the circuit tracers. I think this one here might be okay. But this one here, I'm not too sure about. Anyway, I'm going to do the camera and test it. Oh, uh, excuse me, the computer's just turned itself on. I don't know why it does this. This computer just keeps randomly bringing itself out of standby. I don't know why that keeps going on. Just have to put this into standby again. Okay. 
sleep and stay in sleep mode. Don't keep randomly coming out of it. Right, sorry about that interruption. Anyway, gonna make a recording with this camera and see if we get any sound. Right, okay, we're testing now to see if there's if the sound has improved or if it's completely gone after removing those capacitors. Mum's talking to the cat again. Let's see if we've got anything. Well, good news and bad news. Bad news is, yes, I have definitely damaged one of the tracers on this board. I've de um, this trace here is... Um, sorry, I can't concentrate because Mum's got family going on again. And it's sucking my intelligence through the wall. Anyway, yeah. There is no sound on one channel. So it looks like this is definitely broken, so I'm going to have to try to fix that. Good news is, it has improved the sound quality. Well, the sound quality of the remaining channel that does still work anyway. It's not muffled anymore. As you probably could hear. Still getting that weird in the background. Mind you, I think it's trying to do an impression of them. Anyway, because that's all they do in family, the guy, they just go meh and hit each other all the time. Anyway, not quite know what I'm going to do about that. Just have to try to get this board off, fix this little bit there, and we'll see how things go. Alright, well, here's the screen in pieces. Here's the circuit board. Now, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do here because there's a negative of the microphone's wire there, which goes to the damaged trace. And, I don't know if you can see it, I'll try to get this up to the camera without it blurring insanely. But it goes to a little thing right there that goes onto the other side of the board. But on the other side of the board, it doesn't seem to go to anything. As you can see. I am really confused about that. I was expecting it maybe to connect to this ground plane or something, but it doesn't. So I was going to solder a wire onto there and maybe ground it there. You know, try to fix that, but um, it doesn't seem to go there. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solder this wire to that wire. So with those two grounds connected, and we'll see if it works. Well, it's starting to look like a camera again, or at least somewhat like a camera. And what I've done here is I've connected the ne negative of this microphone here to the negative of this microphone here, which is, if you remember, where the circuit trace was broken. So hopefully that should work. Anyway, let's turn this on and see if it lives. Oh, the screen's a little bit out, but yeah. Is it showing any signs of life? Oh, yes, well... Screen's definitely still working. No cracks or anything oozing out of it, so that's good. Looking at a tape case at the moment. It's telling me there's no SD card in there for some reason. Do you know why? Because it's in here again. I better just stop recording. Okay, so here we are recording on the HD8Z camera, or HD8Z, or whatever you want to call it. Looking, looking around the room. Anyway, this is just a test to see if we have sound on both channels. I'm going to tap each microphone individually. Like that. Anyway, let's see if it worked. Well, unfortunately, it didn't work. 
still have one dead channel in the sound. However, I don't think that's going to be too much of a bad thing because the se stereo separation on this camera wasn't too bad anyway. I mean, wasn't too good anyway. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the audio from the camera. And as you can see, on one channel there's almost nothing. And on the other channel, there is the recording that I made. So let's just give that a little play. Right, okay, we're testing now to see if there's... If the sound has improved or if it's completely gone after removing those capacitors. Mum's talking to the cat again. Let's see if we've got anything. Now I'm going to separate these into two mono channels. Now let's just hear the recording from the working microphone. Right, okay, we're testing now to see if there's... if the sound has improved or if it's completely gone after removing those capacitors. So, as you can hear, that works. Now let's give the other channel a listen. Even though the microphone is not connected anymore, it still puts that noise onto the thing. And it puts that same noise exactly the same on both the channels. So, if I invert one of the channels, and I might just as well do this to the channel that has the noise on it, will make any difference which channel I invert, but I decided to do it to this one. Is when I can find it. Okay, there it is. Now, when we give it a play... Right, okay, we're testing now to see if there's... If the sound has improved or if it's completely gone after removing those capacitors. Mum's talking to the cat again. As if by magic, the noise has gone. Okay, there's still a little occasional high-pitched noise. So I might find out what frequency that is and apply a notch filter to it. But now I will be able to get a noise-free recording from that camera. So a bad thing kind of turned into a good thing. But anyway, as you can see, the camera is back to... Um... Back to being back together again. I'm kind of losing my train of thought here and I don't want to hold this too close to the soldering iron because that's still on right now. But there we go. So that's it for this video, so until next time, goodbye. And now I'm going to do a typical impression of Family Guy. So here it is. I got a fart. I know an idea. Let's all hit each other for fun. That was fun. <laughs> oh, the fart again. Wow, I got my parents. <laughs> that reminds me of the time when. <laughs>